We're going to look at a few of these problems here. I don't want to go over everything. You, I'm assuming that you read the document on compound interest. If you haven't, you really need to read that. I know it takes a while. In addition, I made a video on how to use calculators with formulas because you probably want to do most of these problems that way. So what I want to concentrate on is the uh, problems that involve the spreadsheet. You notice all the formulas here. I brought up a spreadsheet. Let's see. Where do you have to do something like that? Here we go. Problem number four. Create an Excel balance sheet when $2,000 is deposited in a savings account that earns APR, 4% compounded monthly, blah, blah, for a period of four months. Okay, what we've got to do with the Excel worksheet. You bring up Excel, start it up, start with a blank worksheet. We are going to put these labels in, in uh, the first row. Notice that B and D columns need to be a little wider, so I'm just going to guess at it. Click at the top of the column and drag it to make them wider. Let's type these in. We've got month, and we've got beginning balance. interest, ending balance. Okay, um, I'd like them to be centered. What you can do is click on the first column, hold the mouse key down and drag, and then go to alignment. If you have it uh, big like this, you already see the uh, things here. This, this thing here will center them. So that way we get them centered. Uh, now we can start typing some stuff in by typing the numbers here. One here, 2,000 here, 6.67. I want that to be computed. I'm not going to type those. One thing you'll notice is that the 2,000 doesn't come out as $2,000. So what we can do is we can highlight the B, C, and D columns right click, go to format cells, and format for currency. And you'll see the $2,000 already came out as currency. All right, now we've got to do a little, little thinking here. We want to put formulas in. The interest is computed from the APR 4% compounded monthly. And it uh, doesn't matter how many months it's going on, but it's compounded monthly. Let's see. So what we'll do is we'll put a formula in. We'll say equals. Okay, the interest is 4%. I need that as a decimal, 0 0.04. But then I have to divide it by 12 because it's compounded monthly. And then I multiply it by, multiplication is the star, shift 8, the star, multiply it by the beginning balance, which is B2. I could either type B2 or click on the cell B2. And that worked. Okay, then the ending balance is going to be what you started with plus the interest. Another formula equals what you started with plus the interest, see, B2 plus C2. I could either type C2 or I could click on the cell C2. It does it for me automatically. And hit the Enter key, and there we go. All right, we've got that much done. Now, we want to continue for new months. There are shortcuts for doing this. Um, if I click on this month, let me try something. Click on this month. Look at this little square thing in the corner there. If I hold the mouse key down on that and drag down, eh, that just copies the month over and over again. Uh, another way you can do this, click on this month. Let's try holding the control key down and then click on it and drag and watch what happens. You see, Excel thinks that I want to increase them by one each time.
So that's one of the automatic features. I had to hold the control key down to do that. Now I want to go all the way up to the 24th month. So let me do it from here. Uh, hold the control key down, go up to, actually I want to go up to 25 as far as the rows are concerned because row one was the labels. Okay, you see how I did that? Okay, now, for the second month, the beginning balance is going to be what the previous ending balance was. So rather than type a number there, I'm going to put a formula, equals the previous ending balance, equals D2. Da-da, there you go. Now the interest formula is the same as the formula here, except it refers to the new cell. Interestingly, if you click on it, and then drag that thing down, no control key or anything. It copies the formula and it changes, notice it was B2 here in the first one, and it changes that B2 to B3. So it assumes that we want to do the same thing but with reference to the cell next to it, which is really nice. Now I wonder if I can do the same with the ending balance. That's the sum of C2, B2 and C2. I want it to be the sum of, what, B3 and C3. If I just click on it and do the same thing, drag it down, lo and behold, I get it. See? Now all you have to do is click on the first one, hold the mouse key down, drag over here, just those, then grab that little corner and drag it all the way down. And there you go. You have the beginning balance, the interest, and the ending balance. And that's what I want you to do. Now for your assignment, all you have to do is to click on the top thing, drag, now hold the mouse key down, then right click anywhere inside and do a copy. With me so far? Now go over here, we'll click on this. Yeah, click it a couple of times. You want to right click on it and it has paste options up at the top. There's only one option. Click on that and there it is. See? So I got problem number four done. All right, next I want to look at uh, problem number nine. That one involves a bit more. Okay, we have a credit card with an 12.5% APR compounded daily, and you ran up $6,000 on it. All right, I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can look at it. All right, we're going to have to set up an Excel sheet. If we go over to the previous sheet, there's a nice thing you can do with Excel. I'd like you to save your Excel work here and attach it with this assignment. So it might be a good idea to go to File and save it right away. You know, give it a name like uh, homework on uh, compound interest or whatever you want to call it and attach it to this assignment. What you can do in Excel, we've got sheet one, you can create a new sheet. Go to this plus sign down at the bottom, click on it. Now you've got a brand new sheet. And so we're going to have to put this information in a new sheet. Let's, uh, let's widen some of the cells here so we have room. B has to be wider. D has to be wider. No, I don't think so. I don't know. Payment? Well, we can always widen them later. E has to be wider. Now, I do have some others in here. We have a G and H cell. Let me expand this so you can see. Let's make G a little bit wider. H, I'm not sure if that has to be wider. Uh, let me take a look at what we have to do. We have to put in bunch of labels here so let's write day balance before interest payment balance after whoops Now, we have a G cell here, it says monthly payment. I'm not going to put the numbers in yet. We also have one 
down below the G cell, let me widen this thing, called end of year balance. So down here, end of year balance. Now, some of these need to be widened a little. Let's widen this. Uh, another thing I want to do is I'd like all of these cells to be centered. So if I click on A and drag all the way through H and then go to the formatting here, this one, center it. All right, they're all centered. Another thing I want to do is make these labels bold. So click on the A1 drag all the way to G. And then up here you have a B for bold, or you can do control B. And likewise for this one, I want them to be bold. Okay, let's see what else we have to do. All right, we have to put the uh, dates in. Now, interestingly, Excel figures out that you have a date. If I type January 1 or Jan 1, Excel changes it to one desk jam. Now another thing you can do, like we did with numbers previously, one, two, three, four, if you hold down the control key and drag this little box, let's see if this works. No, it works differently. Let me try again. Don't hold down the control key. Just drag this little square there. Aha, that does the job. All right, we want to go all the way to the end of the year, and it is a leap year, so we've got to go 366 days. Since, uh, since the first one starts at, uh, at row 2, I actually want to drag down to row 367. You can grab that box and just drag it. Sometimes it's a little bit slow because it has a lot of computation to figure out those dates. I'm looking at the row numbers, row 366, 367. If you go too far, don't worry about it because you can always highlight the ones, woo, I don't want to do that. You can highlight the ones that uh, you don't want and hit the delete key. So we got them all in there. All right, let's scroll back up to the top. So that's the way to put the dates in. Now another thing you want to do is everything else in this spreadsheet is going to be in dollars and cents. So click on B, hold the mouse down, drag it all the way to wherever, it doesn't matter where. Then right click and format, and we want to format as currency. Okay, so now when we put numbers in there, they'll show in dollars and cents. All right, let's see. At the beginning, we're going to have $6,000. I kind of want to follow my instructions. Let's see, what did we do? In row one, type the headings and end of year balance in G3. Okay, click on cell H1 and name it payment. Okay, H1 is going to be a special cell. Let's see what that is. H1 is the monthly payment. And the reason we're doing this, we're going to name it something reason we're doing this is so we can change its value and come up with different results. And I want to be able to put a new value in there whenever I please. So click on that cell, go up here, click on that, and write PMT. You can name a cell almost anything you want to name it. Hit the return, and you see it has permanently been named PMT. If I click on another cell, it has the cell row and uh, column and row name. But if I click on that row, on that cell, it's called PMT. Okay, so that's step two here. Let's see, in cell A2, oh, we already did all that. We filled in the dates. Uh, select cell A2 and hold down the little square. All right, I already showed you how to do all that. Now let's see. Select columns B through H and right-click and format to currency. We did that. All right, we're going to type 6,000 in cell B2. That's the one balance before right here, right? So type 6,000, and it comes up as money. That's good. Now put zero in cell D2. Oh, wait a minute. Cell C2, we got a formula. 
Okay, the interest is equal to the APR was 12.5%, that's 0.125, but it's compounded daily, and we have 366 days in the year, and it has to be multiplied by the beginning balance. So we want to say time, where is the beginning balance? The beginning balance is in B2. So times B2. Is that right? Okay, let's scroll up here and see if that looks like what we had up here. Ooh, went too far. Yep, 205. Okay, so where was I? Okay, now I, that, that was step six, and then step seven here, put zero in the payment thing, because at the beginning, we're not going to pay anything on this credit card until the end of the month. So we'll put a zero there, okay, under the payment. And then in cell E2, we're going to find type of formula, balance after. Okay, let's see, how's the balance after going to be figured? It is going to be equal to the balance before, which is B2, that one, plus the interest, C2, minus whatever was paid. Does that make sense? Okay. So let me scroll up to 6, uh, 6, 002.05 and see if that's the same as what we have here. Yes, it is. It's the same. Okay, so we're doing that much right. Okay, so we did uh, we did step seven. Now we've got step eight. Select cells B2 through E2. B2, B2, whoops, B2 through E2. There, I selected them. And then the little square in the lower right of the selection and drag it all the way down to the 367th row. See, so we're going to grab this little square here and start dragging down. I'm, I'm going to drag it just a little way to see what's going on. Okay, I see something wrong. The balance before seems to be changing. And so there's something fishy there. And that's not going to work right if we do it this way. Okay, so let's see. What possibly could be wrong? Okay, now select B2 through E2 and the little square in the lower right and drag all the way down to the 367th row. Uh, this balance before, I know what's the matter. I think I skipped one of the steps. My balance before, I didn't change to what it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be a number. See, what Excel is doing is it thinks I want to go up by one. My balance before is not supposed to be a number, so I'll click on the second one here. I hope I said that in the instructions. We, got, we have to write a formula. It's equal to the previous month's or previous day's balance after. See, so equal to E2. Okay, now these are correct. So let me start over. Click here, highlight all these. Start dragging down. Let's see if it makes sense. All right, let me compare that to the beginning of what we had over here in the assignment sheet and see if we're doing it right. Do they correspond? All these numbers look good? Let's see. I see, I see a discrepancy here. Okay, this is 602.5, but this one is not right. The balance after is not right. What happened that went wrong? Oh, look at there. The payments got messed up. Excel thinks the payments are going to increase by one each time. So what we have to do is we, we go to this one, click on this one, and type a zero. I could go down and type all zeros there. But now that I have two of them in a row, if I drag on the first two and then drag down, it works. It doesn't increase it each time. Boy, that was tricky. All right, now let me select 
the first or the last two rows I have to the last row. And by the way, is that what we had here? Yeah, it is what we had here. Okay, now I should be all set. If I start dragging down, everything should look all right. I'll drag a little way. Yes, it's looking good. I don't see anything going wrong here. So now I can finish dragging, drag all the way down to the end of the year, wherever that is. There it is. There's the end of the year. And da da we have succeeded in filling everything in. Now notice that the balance after is increased and increased and increased. Why is that? Because we haven't made any payments. So the next thing we have to do, let me go over here, see if I've got any instructions. Whoops. The next thing I have to do, let's see, I did all this stuff. Uh, I have to go to each month, and in the payment cell, that's the D column for each month, the D column. In the payment cell, type the formula equals PMT. Okay. By the way, I don't know if I said that, we want to put a number in the monthly payment. I know I named that. We want to put $500 in there. So that it'll copy that $500 at the end of the month. Is that getting confusing? Boy, you might have to rerun this a little bit. Okay, anyway, at the end of January, I could do that without having a number in there and just put a zero. At the end of January, January 31, I want to type the formula equals PMT. And watch what happens. It puts the $500 there and it changes the ending balance because we paid off $500. Now I want to do that at the end of every month. So the end of January, the end of February, February 29, equal PMT. Okay, and then the end of March, ooh, this is going to take a little while, equals PMT. End of March, end of April, where do we have it here? Equals PMT. April, end of May, equals PMT. End of June, equals PMT. Okay, end of July, equals PMT. I'm not going to worry about whether there's an easier, quicker way to do this. I mean, we only have 12 months, so it's not that bad. End of September equals PMT. End of October equals PMT. End of November. I'm going to pause at the end of November. Notice that in November, that the balance is still 1430.10. Watch what happens after I do equals PMT and hit the return. See it drop down to 930.10. Okay, and then the end of December equals PMT. And there we have it. So our final balance is going to be 440. Okay, let's go back to the top. All right, now let's see. Finally, select cell H3 and put a formula in there. Let me go over to cell H3. H3 is this end of year balance. That's equal to that cell that I just looked at down at the bottom. According to the instructions, that is cell E. That's a payment balance after cell. That's cell E367. See, 366 is how many days there are in a year, but we started uh, on row 2 instead of row 1. So that way you can see what the end of year balance is. We've got it set up. Okay, now watch what happens if I change the monthly payment. Say I make it $400 instead of 500 Then my end of year balance is still pretty big. Let's say I make it 5 Oh, let's make it 600. Let's just see what happens. 600. End of year balance is a negative number. In other words, I overshot it. 
If I put in, let's say, 520, 185.65 end of year. See, I can figure out what's the ideal monthly payment to bring this down to zero. Just experiment a little. What if I put 530, 58? So it's a little more than 530 a month that you would need if you want to bring that down to zero. Well, I'm not going to say anything more about this. Uh, you might have to rerun this, and I know this is a big project, but it's the only really big project you have during the uh, second week here. But uh, work hard at it. You might have to re replay this video a couple of times in order to get the hang of it, but you should be able to do it.